Hello everyone, and welcome back to the video series looking at the pharmacology of NSAIDs. Today we're going to be talking about prostaglandin synthesis, and really how does the synthesis pathway intersect with the mechanism of NSAID action, NSAIDs being non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So we've got a lot to get through today. Let's, uh, let's begin. So what I've drawn here is a portion of the cell membrane. What, what I'd like to just do is highlight one of these structures, which is actually a phospholipid that the membrane is comprised of. And a phospholipid, if we just blow this up, supersize this image, is comprised really of a hydrophilic head group and two lipophilic tail groups, which are actually made of fatty acids. So the first step in prostaglandin synthesis is the liberation of one of these tail groups into uh, arachidonic acid. So what I'll do is I'll draw exactly what we had there, even color it in orange. So we've still got our head group, but we've liberated this tail group. And this tail group is arachidonic acid. So what is the enzyme responsible for this step? The enzyme is called phospholipase A2. So in your textbooks you might see it written as PLA2. So one thing I just really like to highlight is that with this process the actual nature of these tails, these fatty acid tails, they vary. So amongst your cell membrane, you might have different types of fatty acid tails, but some of those tails are actually arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid, as we saw in our last video, is a 20-carbon molecule that is that has four double bonds and is actually an omega-6 fatty acid. So it's something that we obtain through our diet. So phospholipase A2 will catalyze the cleavage of a phospholipid into its two components, one of which is a key precursor to the prostaglandin synthetic pathway. Now, I will highlight, just for those of you who are interested, I know it's not the topic of, of this video series, but phospholipase A2 is actually the the enzyme that is targeted by corticosteroids. So corticosteroids, remember, are steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs as opposed to non-steroidal. And so phospholipase A2 is inhibited and as a result prostaglandin synthesis is reduced through that mechanism. But let's continue. So we have, we have here formed arachidonic acid. The next step is really the conversion from arachidonic acid to PGH2, which we will talk about in a second. So arachidonic acid now enters the cytosol from the cell membrane, and through an enzyme called, this is a Nobel Prize winning enzyme, called cyclooxygenase, abbreviated as COX. This enzyme catalyzes the conversion of arachidonic acid to PGH2, which is really our inflammatory cytokine or uh, cytokine or prostaglandin. So the PG stands for prostaglandin. But from PGH2, depending on what cell you're in, you actually can obtain other prostaglandin molecules. Um, and by all means, think of PGH2 as your parent plus prostaglandin. So we have PGI2, PGD2, PGF2-alpha, and PGE2. So I'm going to do a video specifically on what the, the individual idiosyncrasies of these, these molecules are and what the functions are. But just to kind of demystify them a little bit, I will tell you that this two subscript represents the number of double bonds in the product. 
So remember, we started with arachidonic acid, which had four double bonds. So through conversion by cyclooxygenase, we reduce that to two double bonds. And these individual arrows down here represent different synthase enzyme steps. So I'll write that down here. Synthase enzyme steps that take place in different types of cells. So if I have a cell where I need to produce PGE2, I would go through PGE synthase. And that would be the machinery that's present in the cell to take me from PGH2 to PGE2. And PGE2 is involved in the central nervous system to produce fever-like symptoms. Likewise, if, if a cell needed FG, a PGF2 alpha or PGD2, PGI2 or thromboxane A2, we would get similar specific synthase biochemical reactions taking place. Now, once again, I just want to emphasize that there are numerous effects of each of these molecules here that I've, I've kind of shown are created, but I will not have time to speak about them in this video. I will be doing a video specifically on the difference between, say, the effects of thromboxane A2 versus PGI2 versus PGD2, etc. Before I elaborate on the cyclooxygenase enzyme, let's just track what we've done so far. So we started at the cell membrane. From the cell membrane, I really brought your attention to a single phospholipid structure. And remember, the phospholipid can have different composition of the fatty acid tails. Some of those fatty acid tails are actually a molecule called arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid is the major precursor molecule for prostaglandin synthesis. So using an enzyme called phospholipase A2, this is key because as we mentioned, it was the target of another drug class called corticosteroids, we obtain this arachidonic acid. This arachidonic acid is now in the cytoplasm, a 20 carbon uh, molecule with four double bonds. It's an omega-6 fatty acid, so it's one of our essential fatty acids. And through a enzyme reaction, which I'm going to doubly star because it's, it's absolutely essential for end state action, we have the conversion to PGH2, so our first prostaglandin from arachidonic acid using cyclooxygenase. PGH2 I like to think of this molecule as sort of, it's kind of like a piece of wood. If one carpenter uses the piece of wood, he or she could make it into perhaps a house, perhaps a boat, maybe even a bookshelf, etc., etc. I find this kind of really helps me understand how it really depends on the cellular machinery to really re to form the, the piece of wood into whatever final product the cell needs whether that's PGE2, PGF2-alpha, PGD2, etc. So what is the story with our cyclooxygenase enzyme? There are two forms of the COX enzyme that we are going to talk about, COX-1 and COX-2, and both of these enzymes are isoenzymes. COX-1 is constitutive, while COX-2 is inducible. So the difference between this is that COX-1 is sort of your enzyme that's constantly being tr transcribed at a basal rate. So there is a low kind of, you can think of this as a homeostatic amount of prostaglandin release in different parts of the body and in different tissues. In the inducible case of COX-2, when there are inflammatory signals, COX-2 is highly upregulated and we get a massive production of prostaglandins that then further the inflammatory drive. So both of these enzymes are actually inhibited competitively by our non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So when a, when a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug is in the picture, we have reduction during inflammation, we have reduction of the COX-2 enzyme which lowers prostaglandin in times of massive inflammation. This has kind of been the first look at the COX mechanism. I will certainly go into more detail in subsequent videos. Thanks again. Have a great day.